course, we have to talk about Beeple. Um, you know, this NFT you're seeing here, I mean, the render archive for Beeple truly is that piece. It was a collage of 5,000 of his everydays. Most of them, uh, certainly the last seven years, were done all in Octane. And the Beeple render archive is something that I think will make a lot of sense to anyone using Octane today and thinking about getting into the NFT space, which now, of course, is thousands of artists. So the work that Mike and I are considering um, that we felt was really important that we started talking about back in November when his NFTs were first selling is we have to take things beyond what NFTs are today, which is just an image, right? Um, we need to document, um, I mean, in the case of the render archive, we want to document a lifetime of his work, all 5,000 of these pieces. And Mike's done that. I mean, he's diligently done his best to you know, provide these images you're seeing here, which shows what tools were used, Cinema 4D, Octane, Photoshop. Um, that's basically a starting point that we want to take further. Um, we want to be able to take those Cinema 4D files, the Octane files, even the Photoshop files, put those in the render archive like we're doing for Alex's work, have an NFT be backed by that so that we can do things like re-render it and take it further than just having a flat image. That's the future of blockchain art, I think. Um, so another example here is, uh, let's see, this is his everyday from November, November 30th, 2017. And um, we want to you know, take this as an example. Here we have an Orbex uh, that was uh, used to generate the render on render. That rendered job itself um, could link to an NFT for this piece. Uh, again, there is one NFT for, from Christie's that linked together all 5,000 of these uh, works, but Mike's actually been selling those individually as well. And that the NFT for this particular uh, piece can now have all those things that Mike linked as images, to, you know, on render. So you can, you know, if you own the NFT, for example, you can open up uh, the Orbex file or the C4D file and do things with it. All of this is verified by render. It can be used to kick off another render job. Um, for example, if you wanted to include this scene in your own Octane render, well, you can download the Orbex as a proxy and it's verified and Mike can create a system around that any artist can. Um, or you could just have it be locally rendered on your phone. And, and you know, NFTs can be a whole new um, flavor of, of utility when you have the scene file itself verified by the system used to create a piece of art and having, you know, remixing and you know, interoperability exposed this way. Uh, of course, you take that one step further from having an Octane Orbex downloaded to a, even a phone and just have it running all in ARKit. Well, then you end up with this, which is what I was using earlier, where you have the actual NFT for that every day running entirely in ARKit. Um, this is, by the way, a, a proxy that was generated from the render job and downloaded to the phone um, from an XAO link. So again, the future is, is pretty interesting for NFTs that are linked through this system. And, and I think Mike's been amazing in sort of the thinking behind how this could work. Uh, I will say that one of the important considerations that Mike has um, for the future of his work, both NFTs and otherwise, are linking back to the physical world. So that piece is something that is offered, for example, for sale on a canvas um, in a physical frame. And the true part of, of the render archive is also physical. I mean, here's a couple of photos that Mike shared with that Christie's piece actually shipping in a crate life size. Um, the thing that, that he and I both identified as being pretty important is shipping a physical uh, object to owners of, of an NFT, of a piece of crypto art. And in his case, you know, he created this, this um, you know, OLED display, shipped it in a box. And that points to the, where the future of NFTs are going from his perspective and from mine as well. And in his case, we're going to be leveraging um, holographic displays, right? So we're already generating render jobs that could be used for uh, an image. We're, we're generating these assets that can be used for local rendering, uh, AR kit. But truly, art that is rendered on a holographic display is a whole new level. That is something that would transcend art on canvas. And it's such an important part of the future of what we're trying to do here. And Lightfill Lab um, is, is providing that technology. Um, they are literally building uh, huge displays that are going to power Holodex of the future. We've announced this partnership for about two years now. And the way that they work, I mean, in large form factors, they can be used to provide holographic concerts. You can have holographic tables, Holodex in particular. But this was a demo that Mike and I actually um, we're reviewing years back. I mean, when we were testing things on the holographic display, there's only one of them, right? Here in LA, we would run it through a projector, do eye tracking, and you can see what it looks like to look at a piece. We're showing this earlier on air kit on a holographic display. Now, granted, this is simulated, but that's what the experience is. That's what the feeling is. So if you imagine an NFT that is only viable on a holographic display, 
um, then the work of art on canvas analogy becomes pretty strong again. And, uh, you know, the displays themselves are now almost ready for production. Uh, a 20 inch by 20 inch panel is 51K by 49K, so two and a half gigapixels. Huge render, about a thousand times more uh, rendering is needed than you would for an HD frame for a 20 inch panel. Um, but it'll look absolutely beautiful. And, you know, given the price that some of Mike's NFTs are selling for and the millions, uh, it's not out of the question to have these um, NFTs be powered by holographic panels. This in particular is one of my favorite experiences on the older panels. I mean, that scene looks like something I've never seen before on any other display. You can't really generate that with auto stereo or even AR or VR. Your eyes converge on the depth in that coat hanger and the door in ways that are just incredible. So I would imagine a high density, you know, collage of people's work all within a, um, you know, on a single, um, you know, holographic display panel would just be incredibly compelling. And it's truly a tool that artists can use to create all sorts of novel experiences. The panels themselves are uh, 20 inches by 20 inches, but they can be linked together to any size display. It's like the Samsung video wall. Like it, it could just be infinitely large. And that's again, how you get to sort of a concert level or, a, or you know, a um, IMAX size holographic screen. The larger the screen's uh, surface area, the larger the volume that can be projected in and out of the holographic display surface can be. So again, going bigger is, is better, but even a, um, a single 20 inch panel is really compelling. By the way, those panels require 16 uh, A6000s to, to, to power right now. It's, it's a lot of energy, but uh, so 10,000 octane bench to just drive it live. But ultimately this is the future and um, it is truly leading towards the Star Trek holodeck, which is one of the things that Otoys wanted to be part of that process for a long time. Holographic rendering, holographic displays, um, frankly, really inspired uh, when I saw Counter at Farpoint, um, the Star Trek The Next Generation episode in 1987. And going back to square one, um, the next archive that we're doing is the Gene Roddenberry archive. Um, Rod Roddenberry is my uh, uh, best friend, investor in Otoy, and we've been working on this project for many, many years. Um, it is different than the other two archives I just mentioned. There's a lot of, of materials. And um, of course, um, you know, Gene is no longer with us, uh, you know, but this archive is meant to celebrate, you know, his hundredth uh, year birthday, which would be in August. And of course there's photos, there's models, there's a lot of materials that are going in there. In fact, there is genuinely a Roddenberry vault, you can see it here in the middle, that's been used by CBS and Paramount to um, provide behind the scenes materials for the Blu-rays. But the team that's been working with Gene for years, including Michael Kuda, who literally has written the Star Trek Encyclopedia, is working with us on organizing all this stuff, creating something that frankly isn't, doesn't exist on Wikipedia or on the web. Um, so many materials from Gene's work and even some of the blueprints that we're using to build CG models of Apple the Enterprise, all those things are part of this project. And providing this system on the blockchain permanently is something that really does need to get done. There's a lot of resources that have been done in books and materials out there that, that just don't really have, um, you know, you maybe you can search from that on the internet archive, but they're really, you know, not extant. So the point of putting this perpetually on the blockchain and also creating amazing assets is the goal of this, you know, this work, which is going on for years and probably going to continue for about a decade to come. And uh, here's a tease of some of the things we're building on render for the Gene Roddenberry archive. And, as um, the end of Star Trek, the most picture said the human adventure is just beginning. And I wanna close out by thanking everyone in the amazing motion graphics, Octane community, the CG community, working with, with you um, as developers, as creators, as partners. I mean, it's been incredible. And really what we've been doing in the GPU space has been you know, a joint effort between customers, artists, creators, developers, and of course, NVIDIA and everyone else. So. We're grateful to be part of it. We're grateful to see the future of GPU rendering, you know, expanding by leaps and bounds every year. And uh, we can't wait to see you next year. So thank you. This is Jules Burback signing off for GTC 2021.